So, what we were talking about? We were talking about commercial bills and commercial bills in India have come into existence many many years back. The oldest form of commercial bills that you see in India is in the agricultural sector and they have a Indian name they are known as hundis and there are two kinds of hundis I told you one is the demand hundi one is the usance hundi the demand hundi is the darshani and the usance one. Now, the hundi market have survived for such a long time in some areas because of the indigenous bankers. The indigenous banks which are unorganized sector banks not recognized by RBI they do not get any help from RBI, but they have existed for a long time and they have at least they are known in two areas of India one in Gujarat one is in uh, Tamil Nadu and there are indigenous bankers elsewhere also, but I do not have the entire picture with me. They have very specific names in Gujarat they have a name in Tamil Nadu they have a name and they are running very well and they support the hundi market a lot because they make a lot of money from the hundi market. Why would banks support without making money from the hundi market all right. Now, let us talk about now the state of affairs about bills this is the conceptual part and there are other kinds of bills I told you clean bill documentary bills then the trade bills the export bill import bills. So, I talked about all these kinds of bills. So, there are inland bills and foreign bills also. Now, let us talk about the bill market in India when what shape is it in. Now, I have been reading about it for a long time. Now, I found something from professor Wole's book primarily and that other book you can get which is an old book it is unedited it has not been revised not unedited what I mean it has not been recently revised but that is a useful book it has a lot of information is the Delhi University faculties book uh, Suraj B Gupta's monetary economics <coughs> that book also has something about these markets if you want to read up you can read there. The bill market if you want to look at the bill market there is there are lots of uh, foreign books of course, some very good books are out there. If you read them you will see the bill market development requires certain features like a country's development requires certain essential things like infrastructure. If infrastructure is poor like a country like in India the development state is also poor it does not develop well it is a very common understanding. So, the bill market to develop properly you require certain features one since bills are often usance bills, so the payment will be made in future not now. The commercial banks have to be participating in the bill market because commercial banks have a lot of cash and if there is an incentive for the commercial banks to make more money it is good because the commercial banks with their cash backup can help the bill market to develop all right. So, how do commercial banks help you know how commercial banks help commercial banks can serve as an intermediary between the both parties can hold the bill forward the cash to the seller of the goods now who wants it now and wait since it has lot of cash it can wait till the bill matures. So, commercial bank participation is necessary number one point number two there this is kind of as soon as you toss as soon as you start talking about commercial banks role you are talking about the secondary market it is coming into the picture because commercial bank is a third party. But you have to remember one thing the commercial banks themselves if they have to participate in the bill market extensively then it also requires a secondary market to exist proper secondary market to exist. So, that if necessary they can part with the commercial bills sell it off in the secondary market like share markets have secondary markets sell them off and get the cash. So, for commercial banks to participate actively in the bill market there should be a well developed secondary market 
secondary market for the commercial bills. Number 3, if commercial banks and other organizations it can be non banks also participating in the bill market either the primary market or in the secondary market whatever sometimes they are directly participating in the primary market maybe as a guarantor between the two parties because the two parties may have a lack of confidence trust. So, if a bank says I know both the parties a bill can be created then I am coming to those services then commercial banks and they are also putting in money investing in uh, commercial bills as happens in any other country it is probably has become quite thin in the western world what I realized which I did not know until this financial crisis happened. Central bank should also have a line of credit or help extended to the commercial banks if the bill market has to develop. Let me put it this way suppose you are trying to develop the bill market. Now, commercial banks do not have an incentive right now because the return is low, but if commercial banks are given a line of credit some cash directly by the central bank to say look this is the money I am giving you to get involved with the bill market if this help requires like you are trying to open your business you are not so much interested in that area, but you are some mentor father mother guardian somebody tells you I am giving you some cash to begin that business alright. With this help which is like an incentive commercial banks will find it easier to go into the bill market and participate otherwise if commercial banks cannot go into the bill market on its own it has to be given some incentive and the central bank is in the best position to give the incentive. This is how with incentives many other things have developed in India also like the non bank organizations IDBI etcetera. They were directly funded by the government of India and RBI to essentially provide loans certain categories of loans like NABARD to were directly funded was directly funded by RBI to give certain kinds of loans which usually commercial banks decline for instance small loans a poor farmer he needs the money, but the commercial bank say are mera to return hai nahi kuch that. normally a profit making organization would be interested, but if there is an assistance then he would say ok fine I will give you the money because even if it is defaulted it is not money my money that I am going to lose, but since I am there in business and they know me and I also know them I can actively engage them in the bill market same way NABARD gives loans to the rural part of the country in India particularly in a developing country like India. Same way which the industry started developing with the non banks like IDBI etcetera. They did not just exist as a profit making organization started by a big business family they were organizations deliberately set up by the government of India and RBI with their funds to help out industrial development. SIDBI SIDB is what? SIDB is essentially for the small industries development. Normally, many banks shy away from that, do not put money. So, where would the money come from? For small industries development. Suppose you open a small industry, you become a small entrepreneur tomorrow after your studies here. SIDB is one of the places to go to because they help out. Even SIDB on campus does certain activities. It is not exactly like charity board, but it has a high risk of default. Okay. So, profit making good organizations often shy away. So, central bank assistance is also very important this is the third point. Fourth point which is very important this exists if you read foreign books particularly English books the English banking system etcetera where commercial bills started and there is a lot of discussion uh, many many years back there have been lot of discussion uh, about um, say uh, 30 years back 40 years back 50 years back there have been books around and maybe maybe more years. This is something called acceptance service which is known in western countries where the bill market is very well developed acceptance services all right.
Now, acceptance service, this, line, this word you should learn, these two words is a service that specializes, institutions that specialize in the development of commercial bills at a low cost. What do they do? They stand as a guarantee, acceptance is a guarantee, I accept something is a guarantee that it provides to the drawer of the bill that if you create a bill with this party in Kanpur when you are selling a good, selling some goods the bill will not be defaulted. So, the acceptance service it can be a bank providing it knows both the parties one is shaky who is selling the goods to the buyer in Kanpur who would pay later. So, the commercial bill is going to be created and if there is an acceptance service a trustworthy respectable organization who knows that the the, the, the company in Kanpur can give the guarantee in whatever form it is to the drawer of the bill in Madras the example that I gave you that create a bill do not worry I am there the bill will not be defaulted. In order to provide that guarantee the acceptance service which may be a bank who knows who provides the service banks specialize in many things other than commercial banking you know that. They, or they float mutual funds, uh, they often go into merchant banking activities, all sorts of subsidiaries they open, they can open a subsidiary acceptance service, but that of course, the guarantee would be provided against a commission, because acceptance services are specialized institutions which hire people work there, they collect a whole lot of information. And it becomes more important these acceptance services particularly when you are talking about trade a company in India in Gujarat is buying something from a company in Germany or a company in Gujarat is selling something to a company in Germany all right. Now, the of course, there is this issue about the quality of the product suppose the quality has been verified through technical expertise, but how about the financial aspect whether the payments will come through or whether they would default particularly first world country often uh, lack trust first world countries lack trust in developing countries companies. Well, if you are a Tata and a Billa you roam around all over the world you acquire you have acquisitions in England, US everywhere everybody knows it. You know what Tata has been doing they even bought Land Rover the famous uh, that uh, car company automobile company in England they bought out Land Rover they bought out Tetley T, T the famous company in England then it is a different story, but suppose some other companies new companies doing well good business in India. So, you require acceptance services who knows these companies in India who is respected by a foreign economy agents and therefore, a, a trade can take place commercial bill can come into existence all sorts of things will follow all right. So, acceptance is like a guarantee essential which provides in this way it may not directly involved in funding remember acceptance service is not banking service operate in the bill market they often come with money ok your bill will be paid 3 months later I will buy it or I will discount it whatever you get the money, but you would not get that amount because you are not waiting out 3 years 3 months I am going to wait 3 months and I will get the money from the uh, what you call the drawee of the bill in Kanpur. Acceptance services are not necessarily involved not at all involved maybe with providing funds, but it is for providing guarantee. So, they are like guarantors in commercial bills and this has become quite this is quite common in the first world countries or any country which has a well developed bill market there are well developed acceptance services companies available and they are known in UK for instance they are known as accepting houses 
in UK United Kingdom it is known as accepting houses and often commercial banks commercial banks who know a whole lot of producers because they are doing this business day in day out by giving loans etcetera open a subsidiary and accepting house which does not deal with money directly, but provides this kind of a service. All right. So, they have to they have they have they carry an enormous amount of up to date updated information on companies how they are doing otherwise how would you provide the guarantee you have to know how the company has been doing it is not 10 years back I used to know him that kind of a uh, statement would not uh, create much uh, um, confidence in the in the drawer of the bill who is writing that bill and selling the goods. So, they carry a whole lot of information. So, it is a very active work with computers internet etcetera it has become easier must be because com information technology or information collection and assimilation etcetera processing of this kind of a service center as must must have become much easier now with the internet etcetera and computers, but they exist from pre internet age remember they are just not the new ones they are there for many many years now all right. And finally, one more point this is the fourth point I mentioned finally one more point I want to mention you may read up books you may find many more issues that they deal with. Finally, one last point I want to mention is that if a secondary market has to exist what you need a good secondary market like a share market Bombay stock market is a very good efficiently running secondary market in shares. How does it run who are who are the who are the is who are the institutions a group of units who run it who operate it who are what are they called not underwrite underwriters are in the primary market but the secondary market who runs them the brokers and dealers and some of the brokers and dealers are millionaires they are big companies they are brokers simple brokers you can become a broker in the share market. So, the brokers and dealers who run the secondary market suppose you want to develop a secondary market in the housing sector which have exists very well in foreign countries I have seen these are like brokers middlemen some company who collect information on all houses that people want to sell collect information on the people who want to buy them all right and they mediate that. So, a secondary market will function efficiently if you have a well developed system of brokers and dealers in that market. So, the last point is if you want the commercial bill market to have a good secondary market also which is sometimes very necessary for financial organizations to come in and participate because they know there is an exit route if I want I can sell them off there is a secondary market and get out because I need the cash for some reason. So, a well developed set of uh, brokers and dealers are required for any uh, any any item to have a good secondary market an effective secondary market. So, the same point comes here as well brokers and dealers are required all right. Now, let us see how has been the Indian real market doing all right there is a lot of discussion I have that is what I have been reading also reading up on them there is a lot of discussion on this broker on the development of bill market ok. First of all when I, I will show you the data uh, the bill market the way data exists we hardly have any data on the unorganized bill market the hundi market etcetera we do not have any data at least I do not have researchers can go into these markets and collect some information, but that will be one time information it cannot be updated on a regular basis. So, on a regular basis you do not have data now if you look at the organized sector bill market in India I will show you data it is very small the organized sector bill market data. And one of the reason is that the bill market the way people have come to know 
has been a, pers a characteristic feature of the unorganized sector. In the organized sector the business have not been run with use of commercial bills in India. The practice has not been there the way it has been in the western countries first world countries it has not been there in India all right. But what did they do SBI and also RBI from time to time tried to develop the bill market. But it is very unfortunate that for instance State Bank of India's participation um, in commercial bills completely stopped after 1965 it is very interesting all right. And the reason is the state bank was asked by RBI which had two, pro, two twice at least they came up with schemes called bill market schemes one in 1952 and one in 1970 to develop the bill market. What RBI basically did was one thing it wanted to tell them is that initially that um, you try to develop the organized market bill market. So, that the indigenous bill market which is the hundi market which has been hitherto the largest bill market the unorganized sector bill market will slowly accept and start participating and coming to the organized market. So, it becomes part of the organized market. So, the approach of RBI was in the bill market schemes you try to develop funds were made available from RBI to the public sector banks like SBI in particular to develop the organized sector bill market fine. And the idea also was you develop it in a way so that the Hundi market is forced to become part of the organized sector because their funds are available, but the Hundi market has been running on its own with the unorganized sector funding all right. So, what happened? Hundi market never got funds of course, not the organized sector market did not develop well for whatever reason it may be because we do not have a habit of participating in commercial bills creating commercial bills. And one of the objectives that RBI had in the bill market schemes is to bring that organized sector like there are people illiterate people you develop an education system in a way you impart education to the local people, but also try to incorporate the uneducated people into your education system. So, that the general level of education goes up, but what you did you did not focus on them in fact, you are trying to compete with them to say they got more scared and tried away more from you and you essentially started teaching who are already educated. So, this job was not done with the RBI bill market schemes and finally, as we I said we are unable to develop that much. Why was the job not done? Because businesses in India initially after independence as you have seen in that course was kept with the government sector and the private sector was not given much freedom to develop. So, for a long time 30 40 years after independence what you had in India was a public sector dominated economy the private sector was not allowed to develop much all right. So, who would create bills there will be some bills between public sector companies not much because public sector companies do not mistrust other public sector companies because they all know are the children of the government. Indian oil doing business with air India how much of a fight will be there how much of a lack of trust will be there the climate is entirely different you are talking about a bill market in the private sector where the parties do not know they want to expand they are trying to grow and whether there is a support system for the bill market to develop. So, how would the bill market be developing kind of economy you had bill market could not develop all right. Next acceptance services were never thought of the entire bill market developed in England because of these accepting houses which hardly existed in India. So, even if funds are available there is no trust. So, banks would have money there, but banks would not be lending them or using them government may have given them RBI may have given them money, but they were not using them. 
and accepting house accepting services were not there no guarantor there all right and then what they did was very interesting they said okay commercial banks are unable to develop the bill market in india rbi said okay other institutions since after the second bill market scheme 1970 they said bring other non bank institutions ici lic uti gic icici which is a private sector non bank all please come in and try to help develop the bill market they suddenly said because banks were unable to develop them initially they were trying to develop through the banks and particularly sbi so when i would talk about the the interest rate in the bill market the bill market rate i will mention sbi rates because sbi was functioning there and it used to be called the sbi rate all right i'm coming to that so lic gic etc we all were asked to participate but these non bank financial institutions had other headaches their headache was not so much of bills short term bills money market bills they are not funding services they are not accepting houses they were meant to do other things merchant banking finance industrial development big big things they had it still did not work while you open the door to the non banks bill market hasn't been developing in india all right often what happened was that the bill financing banks bill financing by banks is was often looked upon as very interesting if there is a respectable company like tata etc where bills were created and you hold the bills as a middleman or something you purchase the bills or something often what happened was these bills these institutions were using as mortgages to get a loan from bank so the bank funding was giving loan against the bills and the bills were the mortgages because bills are so respectable a few companies who were using bills are so well known companies their bills were like mortgages like holding shares and bonds very interesting banks were funding that giving out loans against them all right there were no rediscounting facility available from rbi regarding bills suppose commercial bank has bought a bill it needs cash there is no secondary market bill market yeah, i need the secondary market now you go to rbi to rediscount them because you need cash all right already you have discounted it and bought them or something hold them now you go to rbi to rediscount them because you need cash rbi was not giving them any support so no rediscounting facility was available to the banks on these bills so rbi had a scheme you do it without much support from us all right and then gradually they found often commercial bills as in india were not genuine real bills bills were written between two parties because of a financial transaction no real goods really ever changed hands they were not genuine commercial bills they were financial transactions between two parties no goods transaction which has created bill and this created an enormous problem these were not genuine bills either all right okay now so now when i look up rbi data site i find commercial bill data and i got puzzled they had inland bills which is fine foreign bills which i understand so lot of bills getting created these days not much compared to the total credit i will come to the number whatever for inland business within india chennai se kanpur goods ja raha hai bill taiyar ho gaya india se bahar ja raha hai bahar se india mein aa raha hai foreign bills were getting created good so i looked at the number how is the number showing over time inland volume of bills and the foreign bills but then i found two words there which puzzled me purchased and discounted and i was wondering if a bill i as a commercial bank is investing when i look at the bank sing sector data i found commercial bill data i'm bank i'm putting in a money why would i make a distinction between purchase of a bill and a discount of a bill because bill is usually discounted because the bill would be paid later 
So, I discount that bill, so you get the money now and that discount factor is my income 2 months later. So, I say a crore ka bill amount, I discount it I give you 98 lakhs or 99 lakhs something 50,000 or 60,000 or 80,000, 20,000 remains that is the discount factor that I will get 2 months later that is my income. Why is the purchase data? I got very puzzled and RBI does not explain purchased bills both inland and foreign, discounted bills both inland and foreign. Who is the purchase coming from? Then I realized what happened hunting up and down. Demand bills which would be paid as soon as the goods arrive with the buyer from the seller as I gave you that example when I buy some durable goods Kanpur seller that shops ship that good yesterday I went there I booked something with some advance payment and they will ship it and these are demand bills they create as soon as the goods reach my home I found it safe and ok I say received on a memo like thing and I can make the remaining cash payment the transporter carries that cash from me to the Tukanda shop owner. This I have done millions of times whenever I bought TV, fridge, um, you know, whatever, even other small items also. Then I understood what purchase bills meant. Purchase essentially meant that these demand bills it will take a few days to reach, a few weeks to reach, but the seller cannot wait even a few weeks. So, these bills were also at some price they were purchased, there is a discount rate also purchased by the bank where bank is putting in money and wait out 3 weeks to get the cash from the buyer of the goods in Kanpur. So, purchase data referred to the demand bills and the discounted data on commercial banks inland or foreign referred to the usance bills. I understood that later quite late I did not understand initially all right. So, RBI data when I will show you will see that purchase data and discounted data on commercial bills you can open it tonight if you want RBI site you will get that number. And inland bills purchase to discounted ratio was very interesting purchase is less than discounted demand bills are less than usance bills in terms of commercial bank participation is like 0 0.3, 0 0.3 means what 30 percent, 30 percent of the discounted bills were purchase bills. So, this is how it went all right. Indian bill market rates have been very funny if you open Bhole you will find it. There is one bill market rate which when RBI used to rediscount these bills for commercial banks was the bank rate, bank rate is like the central bank's interest rate. When central bank is helping a bank it charge an interest rate which is called bank rate, bank rate is nothing but that. Commercial banks interest rates are known as lending rates, deposit rates, fixed deposit rates, savings deposit rates, lending rates etcetera. When RBI or a central bank lends to somebody either bank or a non bank or somebody then that interest rate is called bank rate. So, the bank rate was often used to decide the commercial banks lending rates etcetera against commercial bills. Then SBI had a hundi rate very interesting it is called SBI hundi rate. So, when SBI would discount hundis which belong to the unorganized sector at once upon a time they used to do that they used to use this used to be called the SBI hundi rate, but it does not exist anymore SBI does not discount hundis anymore what I have heard. Then these unorganized sector shroffs and multans and chettias indigenous banks they deal a lot with these hundis etcetera commercial bills unorganized sector commercial bills and you know what they call this uh, interest rate there they have a term also for the interest rate they call that the bazaar rate is there in books bazaar rate unorganized sector banks call the interest rate on hundis in which they do a lot of business with hundis unorganized 
सेक्टर है उन्नी तो अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर का ही है और अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर बैंक लाइक मुल्टान स्टॉप सेक्टर्स दे यूज अ टर्म देयर कॉल द बाजार रेट अच्छा then at at one point and still it exists some commercial banks other than sbi discount bills that's why i have the data on rbi site rbi is not dealing with the commercial bills directly commercial banks are dealing with them and they are known as the commercial banks bill finance rate commercial banks bill finance rate and uh, it is very interesting that sbi has now probably does deal with a little bit uh, with the directly with some first class bills only sbi to sabse uncha position hai public sector bank ke andar they deal with only with now to longa hundi hundi market they deal with the big companies commercial bills startups and builders etc and you they call that the sbi discount rate they call that the sbi discount rate and the commercial banks discount rate is known as commercial banks bill finance rate so about four five names you will find regarding the interest rate or the discount rate of the commercial bills in the literature you will find them okay now i don't have any information on these interest rates if you ask sbi if you go to them maybe you will get the information i haven't got any commercial bill interest rates information one small point i want to mention there is one other type of commercial bills which not many people know which do not belong to the money market at all they are very long term commercial bills and in this long term commercial bills institutions like idbi cdb big big non banks participate what kind of bills these bills are very interesting bills these bills are idbi what does it do it helps you to develop industry so suppose you have you need a big machine but you cannot afford to purchase it or idbi will lend it to you or you need some cash for specific investment all right idbi will lend to you similarly idbi often lends which are also called long term commercial bills when a company wants to purchase something a machine it cannot make the payment immediately idbi stands as just not like a guarantor stands as a financier for the company in purchasing that machine say from another country a foreign land an expensive it will be imported so idbi finances it creates a bill in favor of that company where the company pays over a period of time like a loan these are also known as commercial bills because idbi is not a bank so idbi cannot give a loan in the true sense of the word cannot create credit what idbi does is that oh you don't have the cash don't worry i know you i will get it procure it but a bill will be created long term bill according to that you will be repaying money to me like a fixed payment loan or something all right and the maturity is sometimes 5 years and can even go to up to 7 years time they give that bill maturity to bill to mature entire payment to be done these are very interesting things industrial development going on a company wants to buy a machine IIT Kanpur, for instance, a new education institution wants to buy some equipments for the lab. It doesn't have the funds, so somebody comes and purchases it, but creates a bill, and this institution, over a period of five years, seven years, repays that money. It's not like a bank credit. Bank is bank collects deposits and creates credit multiple of that. Here, it has a corpus. It gives a loan indirectly. It doesn't give you the cash. it purchases it on your behalf and temporarily the ownership may be with idbi then it hands over that ownership of that machine to you all right okay and there is a thousands of crores are idbi i have found data up to 95 96 i don't have data since mid 60s idbi started this business idbi and some other non banks and thousands of crores they have given out 
as commercial created this kind of a long term commercial bill where the payment will be made in future all right some transaction took place real goods basically a good has come from there to here idbi will make the payment now for them and then would recover the fund from the local producer the commercial bill gets created local producer over a period of time long term commercial bills not short term money market nahi hai jo padha hai abhi tak it's not that case it's a different kind of commercial bill so these are um, what we have found is that the idbi rediscount rate here etc whatever it does business has been lower than short term bills and even rbi rates idbi has been very generous in that sense these non banks have helped your country to develop a lot particularly idbi sidbi etc you have seen sidbi how much it does for you even for iit kanpur students they want to do something develop a prototype develop a new technology from their lab their students and sidbi helps them with some funding so these organizations do a lot for industrial development and other things these are not banks remember these are non banks they have a corpus and they lend out of it they don't create credit they don't create a multiple of that loan five times that amount loan wo sab nahi wo sab bank ka business hai wo mere paas 2000 rupya hai theek hai aapko main 200 rupya diye unko 300 rupya diye unko 400 rupya diya unko 1000 de diya aisa and then i recover the money over a period of time so some were company in india buying a machine from germany they get into an agreement with idbi standing in between they know each other very well being a national institute national institution and germany agrees to sell it and idbi makes the payment german wala bhag gaya payment leke abhi local wala jo pada hai inke sath ek bill to taiyar ho gaya tha wo bill ka payment dheere dheere hota hai clear these are very long term bills acha so i guess this is enough for your commercial bills